Oh, hey, friends. Yeah, it's woodworking and whiskey time. And I wanna give you five tips on how you can improve your woodworking bench. So let's go. All right, here's the deal. 10 years ago or so, a little bit more, I made this woodworking bench. This is one of the first projects I ever made in my journey as a woodworker. And I want to talk to you about some of the pitfalls, some of the mistakes that I made, some of the joinery that I used, and explain what those do in this bench. And then I wanna give you five tips on how to improve your bench should you choose to upgrade or build a bench yourself. So let's start from the very beginning. So you can see that there are a couple of different uh, components of this bench. Very briefly, basically you have the leg assembly, you have the aprons, you have the tool well, and you have the top. The legs are put together with mortise and tenons and also biscuits. So when I was starting out, I tried to hand cut these mortise and tenons. I wasn't very good at it. I started to get a little bit frustrated. And then for the second assembly, I put them together with biscuits because I came from a construction background and that's what I knew. And here's the interesting thing after I just got done disassembling this entire bench, the mortise and tenons hold up no better or worse than the biscuits. This has been, I think it's been 11 years since I've made this. Still in pristine condition, still hold nice and tight. Now, second bit of joinery, the dado with the aprons. Both of these aprons are dadoed into the legs. So let's talk about that for a brief second. Now, what is this apron actually doing and what is this dado doing in the apron? It's doing two things. Number one, it's giving you an attachment point so that you can attach the top assembly to the base assembly and the base assemblies to each other. Okay, that's the first thing it's doing. The second thing it's doing though, and far more important than that, is this dado and this apron are keeping these legs aligned. This leg assembly being set in an apron and then consequently screwed, as you can see here, does not allow this leg assembly to rock back and forth as I'm putting lateral pressure on this bench when I'm sawing, planing, doing a myriad of other techniques. So that assembly right there, that dado, that joint, makes this bench rock solid. Now the third and final joint on this bench is nothing more than a butt joint, which is when two boards are glued together with pressure. That's all there is to it. In this case, for this top, you can see that these were butted together in this orientation, but also sandwiched together in this orientation, or also called laminated. So this is essentially two bench tops that I cut in half, recycled, and folded up on each other to laminate them together to give me about three and a half-ish inches of thickness. This was an old workbench I stole from my father, so that's why I ended up with this maple top and why all of these seams are pretty well opened at this point. But it's flat, it's stable, it's hard and it's heavy, and that's really what matters for this bench top. So in that case, I don't actually care that it has these cracks in here or that you can see this double lamination. It still functions really well. Now that we got that out of the way, Let's talk about five improvements that I would make to this bench or suggest that you make to your bench if you are building a new one so that you can avoid some of the pitfalls that I've had over the last decade. First up, a tail vise. This may not be of the utmost concern to you now at the beginning of your woodworking career, but I'm telling you, once you start getting into joinery, hand flattening, hand planing, doing a lot of work at your actual workbench, Having something to be able to lock a piece in place like a tail vise is going to be crucial. I have worked without it for a long time. I've never had a tail vise on this bench, but I've worked on a lot of benches with tail vices and man, they're nice. Once you have them, they're really nice to have. So I'll show you what I do to work around that. Now, if I need to hold something flat on my workbench horizontally, what I can do is a combination of two things. First and foremost is the dog holes. So I can pop this bench dog up, up here. I can put my piece in place. And then I have this funky little thing which acts as a tail vise or a mini tail vise that slips right into a dog hole. Can slide that right in there. And then I can lock this piece down just like that. And I'll tell you what, for a lack of a tail vise, this is really rock solid. I've been impressed with this thing for a long time. This is from Veritas, I'm not sponsored by them, but I really highly recommend this 
in particular, it's really, really nice. And this can allow me to do all kinds of things like joinery, like my dados, saw across this piece, plane across this piece. But one thing that might happen is this might be a little bit tall if I wanna actually plane this piece down. So I'll show you what I do for another thing, which is the plane stop, and that's tip number two. Now here's an improvement that I just made recently to my bench. I had a dig from an old router that just dug right into the bench here. So I decided to fill this in with a plane stop. Basically what this is is just a piece of wood that's in here. There's a magnet in there so I can get it out. And then I can slide in a plane stop of an appropriate height. They're all the same shape, just differing widths. And I can slide a piece of wood right up to it and I can go ahead and I can plane this down. This has already been a brilliant addition to my workbench. I'm really, really happy with the way that this works. I did this on the Shaper Origin in probably 15 to 20 minutes. On tool, no issues. If you don't have a Shaper Origin, that's totally fine. You can still do this with just a router or you can do it by hand if this ends up being square. It's entirely up to you and you don't need to have this plane fill in here or this, this bench fill in here. That's just me doing that because I like to not have holes in my bench. But that's tip number two, it's a brilliant little thing. Now there may come a point where you need to hold a work piece down flat on your workbench and you don't have a tail vise or you need to hold it at a weird angle or something of that nature. And so tip number three, get yourself a pair of bench hooks. They're one of the easiest things and they're really inexpensive. But check this out, I'm gonna slide this right into my dog poles. I'm gonna give it a tap. That thing ain't going nowhere. That thing is locked down. And then to get them out, I'm just gonna give them a tap on the back as I pull up on them. Now here's the thing. I don't know how they work. They're black magic. They're old technology. It's been lost to science for millennia, but I do know that they do work. It's something about friction and steel and all kinds of other old things, but it works, it works well. And like I said, this particular pair is pretty inexpensive. So go get yourself a pair because they work really well when you need them to. And that's when you need them to work. I don't even know what that means, but get yourself a pair. Oh, Jiminy. I'm getting old, guys. Tip number four, make a plane till. Now this may be impractical if you have multiple uh, uh, tool cabinets and you don't wanna actually have things under here, but the reason I like a plane till is that it's easily accessible. I'm working at my bench, I need my plane, I reach under my bench, I have my plane in my hand. I don't need to walk over to a tool cabinet, I don't need to reach and open cabinets and do all these other kinds of voodoo. I just have them there and they're good to go. Yes, they will get some dust on them. Yes, that can cause rust if you're working in a moist environment. No, they don't cause rust in my shop. No, it's not hard to blow that out with an air hose every once in a blue moon. It's not a big deal. And here's the other reason I think most people are uh, opposed to a plane till. It doesn't display them on the back wall for the video. I don't know what to tell you. These are the planes I use the most. These are the spoke shaves I use the most. This is where I like to keep them. It's a thing that I find very convenient. Yes, it doesn't look pretty for YouTube, but it works really well. So there's a tip for you. If you choose to accept it, tip number four, make a plane till, super, super simple. Which now brings me to tip number five. Use materials that you can afford. Here's the thing. Pine, 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 plywood. Everything on this bench, including the bench top, was either free or cheap and it worked for a decade. It worked really well. If you can afford to make a maple and walnut workbench and you want to because you can, go for it. There's nothing wrong with that. But don't spend money that you don't have or would otherwise have spent on materials for actual projects to build a bench, man. Like it's, it's a workbench at the end of the day. Stop overthinking it and just make a bloody thing. It can be a, a hollow core table from a big box store for all I care, just Get yourself a work surface so that you can actually make a thing because that's what matters and that's where experience comes in is the doing of the thing, not the thinking about the thing. So tip number five is just, just make things. Buy affordable materials and make things. So there it is, friends. 
five practical tips to improve your workbench, things that I've picked up over a decade plus of making furniture. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, leave a comment in the, in the section below, wherever you leave comments, the comment section, I believe it's called. And uh, I'll continue to do videos like this. I enjoy having a drink and talking about woodworking. So maybe I'll keep doing it if you request it. Otherwise, friends, get out there, make things, do a thing, make a bench, make furniture, enjoy the process, and have a delightful day. A delightful day. Have a delightful day. And I will talk to y'all on the flip. Be good, make a decisions.